And we are in line six. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. O seed of Abraham. Now, this is all this is for who? The seed of Abraham, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. And clearly, if we have accepted Christ into our hearts to be our Savior and Lord, then we are part of the seed of Abraham. You children of Jacob, his chosen ones. And clearly we are, you know, his chosen ones. Line seven, he is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan and as the allotment of your inheritance when they were but few in number and indeed very few and strangers in it. So let's go ahead and elaborate on this six line stanza starting at line seven. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is our Lord, our God, our deity, our master, our ruler, our divine one, our deity. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. What are his judgments? And, he, <laughs> and here we go again with that judging. You know, a lot of people say, well, you can't judge me. Only God can judge you. Oh, yes. And his judgments are in all the earth. The things that he he wants and he commanded, those are his judgments. And if he said it was wrong, it's wrong. And you're going against his judgment. If he said it's right and you're still not doing it, it's going against his judgment. And the word of God itself is his judgment. He said it. That's He gave it to us. His statutes. His precepts. What are precepts? Those responsibilities, responsibilities that he has appointed for his people. The word of God is full of responsibilities that we're responsible for. <laughs> so he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. There's nowhere, you, there's nowhere in this world you can go without facing the judgment of God. Eight, he has remembered his covenant forever. He did not. He hasn't forgotten his covenant. Oh, that was for that covenant. Oh, that's for this is the new covenant. All his covenants are the same. Jesus himself said he did not come to abolish the law, but he came to what? Fulfill the law. And so what that means is that now by Jesus Christ, we are able to fulfill the law through Jesus Christ. In of, of ourselves, no, we cannot fulfill the law. Remember, Jesus Christ is living on the inside of us. He's our hope of glory. And so whatever he has commanded and whatever he, he has done, we have him. We don't have a 50% Jesus or 30% Jesus or 66% Jesus or 99.9% .9 Jesus in us. We have all of Jesus, 100% of Jesus. And that's why he can say, be perfect as I am perfect. That's why Peter, uh, Paul said what? If you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have, and that's why Jesus said we have to crucify our flesh daily. This right here doesn't want to do what's right. But if we allow our spirit man to overtake our flesh, then we're going somewhere. We're getting somewhere. 
it's all of the Bible. It can be fulfilled. From Genesis to Revelation, it can be fulfilled because while we have Jesus living on the inside of us, helping us with it. And then not only that, he sent us our sent us his Holy Spirit to keep us and to guide us into that righteousness, into that truth. And so, and if we're not uh, being uh, indwelt in, in, with the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead our lives, psh, of course you can use the excuse, well, I'm not perfect, or, or we going to sin. Yeah, keep using those excuses. But let's see where, where you're going to end up. Because God's standard is there, and he's not lowering his standard. Remember, God keeps his promises. And if he said it, he's going to perform it. I'm not playing around with God. <laughs> I'm going to pray to God. I'll see you in the next segment.